Hey everyone, Bob here, and thanks for popping in back over here at Ruger Gun Dog. Today is segment three of the Arkin EPL4 giveaway. If you haven't done so already, go check out segment one and segment two and see what you've got to do to get yourself in the running to win this EPL4 absolutely free. All right, with all that out of the way, what are we talking about today? So today you can see I've got a couple different Arkin optics back here. I have the EPL4 that we're talking about, as well as an EP5 and a SH4 Gen 2. And what I'm going to do is pull all these optics out of the box and compare them side by side and let you guys see the size differences, uh, a little bit about the turrets and some things of that nature. I'm not going to get a lot of shoot through footage and things like that. There's tons of that out there. I've even got some of that content out there, and that's not really what I'm focusing on. Uh, this comparison is gonna focus more on how is this optic gonna mount up on a rifle. And in this application, what I'm kind of focusing on is for the hunting guys, any hunting platform, hunting setup rig. I've got with me a Remington 700 that's got a varmint contour barrel and a 20 MOA rail on it. So what I'm gonna do is take the uh, EPL4 here with some of the arc and low rings i'm gonna mount this thing up let you guys see the process and let you guys see how it fits on here how it looks clearances with the barrel and the rail and things like that some common questions that people are often asking on the social media platforms i'm gonna pull these optics out put them next to each other let you guys see this uh differences in the turrets uh check out the epl4 capped turret things like that real common questions and hopefully, I don't know, get you guys really up to speed on what the EPL4 has to offer. So with all that said, let me get to unboxing these things, pull them out, and let you guys see them side by side. Now, regardless of which Arc and Optic you buy, all of these things come packaged pretty much the same way. There might be a little bit of different configuration of some foam in there, but they all come in a real sturdy cardboard box with tons of foam in there. So if you've got an overzealous UPS, FedEx, or a US Postal Service delivery person. I wouldn't get too worried about it. These things are really sturdy optics and they're packaged well. So let's get right to this. So first thing, here is the EPL4. Uh, all these optics come with the rubber bikinis that you can see. First one I'm gonna compare this to is the SH4. So here is an SH4 and the SH4 that I'm comparing this thing to, um, is noticeably heavier. Now you can go to Arkin's webpage, you can look up the specs, but I'm here to tell you, when it comes to putting these things on a hunting rifle, you're gonna notice right out of the box that this EPL4 is considerably lighter. It feels a third lighter just not putting this on a scale or telling you guys those actual numbers. But let's look at the optics themselves. So the SH4 Gen 2 has open turrets. So, and what I mean by that is all of our turrets are exposed and readily adjustable. Uh, this optic has got the 34 millimeter tube and some heft to it. When we get down to this EPL4, the main comparison that you're gonna see on this optic or you know, looking at a SH4 Gen 2 or the EP5 is this capped turret right here. So simply, remove it and there you've got your numbers and your adjustments, your solutions right here. And the way that this works is very simple. You do not need to use the supplied small two millimeter, if I believe, Allen key to make your adjustments to this windage knob. You look real close right here. There's simply a inner ring that you can adjust. If it gets too tight, there's a small fingernail notch in here that you could probably get to with a coin, like a dime or a penny, I would say. Anyhow, you pull this off, and when you get to this, all you're gonna do is, here is your cap right here. Uh, this thing has some locking teeth on it, just like everything else would, and it's gonna lock into place once you get your solution set or your zero, and you get that into place, and you simply put this cap back on. Uh, it's real simple to do. You get it a little bit snug, and there it is. Well, this cap right here is just a security measure. If you're out hunting and this thing is getting whopped around while it's on your sling, this cap snugly is gonna keep your windage knob in place. You know, if you're a guy that hunts from a shack or a stand or something like that, 
You know, you can use this optic just like you would an SH4, an EP4, EP5, any of the other optics and crank in your solutions and not really worry about losing this. You could put a small dab of something like the Vibra Lock or Blue Loctite on this. I wouldn't get over crazy with anything locks any more than that, but you could lock this cap in a little bit if you wanted to. I suggest just use the cap. That's what Arkin supplied it with. So here is the EPL4. You know, I'm looking at this and comparing it now to the EP5. And boy, I will tell you, this EP5, and this is the, you know, the higher magnification model. And this is the lower magnification model, EPL4. So we're looking at a little bit difference in the magnification setup. But bulk and heft, if you've got these on your hunting rigs, the EP5s, I am telling you that this may be your solution if you're looking to lighten things up. That is noticeably different. Uh, the other thing is the 34 millimeter tube versus the 30 millimeter tube. Really can't tell the difference and you'll notice it if I hold these up to the rifle, the rig setup, how much smaller this EPL4 looks. It's a little more pleasing to the eye actually on a hunting rig. The EP5, hey, I'll be the one to say, it does look like a bit of a monster up on the rifle for a hunting rig. I have carried that rig around Wyoming with these on it and it's not real pleasant. The rifle itself's heavy, the optics heavy, it all gets heavy. This EPL4, you can see the little trend I'm on here, lightweight. Now the low power variable optic that they've got coming out, we don't know the weight on that thing yet, but it has a 34 millimeter tube. It doesn't have a front bell, but I'm guessing it's also gonna be light. So here is the EPL4. You've got your turret that is a little bit different. Now this optic that I'm giving away is a MOA scope and I tend to run mill optics. So you can notice, you know, you may wonder why does this have so many numbers going around and why are they so tight? versus these right here. So your turrets are going to look different on a mill scope versus a MOA optic. So that's gonna answer your question there if you were wondering that and if you noticed it. All of these optics come with the sunshade. They all come with these bikini things here. And the precision package, let me grab this stuff here, is uh, three components, well, four. You've got your caps, I don't have those with me today, but we've got the throw lever, some rings, and the bubble level. I'm gonna put all of these on the EPL4 that I'm gonna mount up on this Remington 700. Now let me show you guys how simple that is, how quick and easy it is, and how the EPL4 looks on Remington 700, again, with a varmint contour barrel and 20 MOA rail. You can see the clearance of the front bell, how this thing sits, and how it may look on your platform. So one of the first things you're gonna notice when it comes to putting your Arc and Optic up on your rifle, if you're using their halo rings, is they have laser etched in these rings, the torque specs that you need to use. They also come with the little uh, Allen key wrench in here for you to use. I would suggest that you get yourself a torque wrench or fat wrench is what this one's called and don't rely so much on what your torquing ability is just by hand. Now, if you're gonna do that just to get it you know, kind of in place, that's probably not a problem, but your final setup, I really suggest that you use the torque wrench. Uh, it's a common thing that people are having their scopes move around and people actually cracking these by getting overzealous with cranking things down. So let's open these up and let's get them on. Here's the small wrench that Arkin includes. We're gonna use that to open these up and get them set up right up on the optic itself before we set it up on the platform here.
Now it's important to note that I'm keeping everything loose right now. When it comes down to the final torquing, I'm going to make sure that this small gap on both sides is really about the same. But right now I'm just getting this loosely fit on here so it'll move around so I can get this set up on the rail and get them both on. Okay, so now that I have both rings loosely set up on the optic, next thing I'm gonna do is loosen up these four screws that are gonna allow the clamping sides to open up so I can actually have this thing set up on the rail here and get my eye relief set. Now what I like to do is try my best to get my rings centered between each of the bells and the turret mechanisms. And what I mean by that is I don't wanna have my rings extremely far on either end or super close to the turret where everything is not centered up nicely or could be causing some torque issues. So I'm gonna to try to center everything up real nice. It's also more pleasing to the eye when your rifle's proportionally set up. With everything roughly where I think it's gonna be, I've taken one of the screws and just spun it down snug. And I'm gonna check this thing or check this thing out and you know see how my eye relief is and see how everything is. The reason you want to snug one of these down is obvious. You don't want things falling off and getting damaged, especially if you're doing a mounting out in a field application like this. So let's take it up here, set it up, and let's see how the eye relief is. Okay, so here we are. I have got the rings and the rifle roughly mounted up to the rifle. Nothing's moving around at this point, but nothing is torqued down yet because the next step here is going to be leveling the reticle. And I've got some content on how I do that with the plumb blob string, and there's a million different ways you could do that, but if you're interested, check out my content on that. But that would be our next step. I have my eye relief proper, so I have a nice, clear, full field view. And really at this point, I'm gonna leave this be, get this thing to the range, get it leveled off. And the last step will be using the torque wrench to torque everything to its final torque specs. Now, what Arkin recommends is 18 on the top here, and you can see they print it right on there, 18 inch pounds and 30 inch pounds on the side clamps. And you could tighten those up right now if you wanted to, but in general, I pull the fat wrench out at one point and get this thing all squared away at the range. So here it is. I'm gonna show you guys some close-ups of what this EPL4, this is the four to 16, and what this looks like mounted up, again, on a Remington 700 action, 20 MOA rail with a varmint contour barrel. So here it is. All right, everyone, there's not much more to it than that. It's really simple to mount an arc and optic up on your rifle, even in a field setting like this. These halo rings, they've got the torque specs on them. They help you out, letting you know, reminding you not to over torque things. It's best to use that torque wrench if you've got it, but if you do use the supplied little wrench, just don't get too crazy with that. Today, I did not put the precision pack on the EPL4 on this rig. And again, that precision pack includes the magnification throw lever. This is a nice thing to have, guys. If you don't have one, the Arcan Optics are known for getting kind of tight with that magnification ring when they get cold. So if you're gonna use the EPL4 in a hunting situation, that magnification throw lever is a good thing. And since we're not actually zeroing the rifle or leveling the reticle today, I'm not gonna put the bubble uh, level on there today because I need to level things. And inside the Halo rings package, they always come with a couple extra screws. They're kind of nice and handy. We don't need them today. Throw them in the bucket of your spares. So that's that. That is a field mounting of an Arcan Optic up on your rifle platform. I hope you find this content useful. I hope you get yourself in the running to win this EPL4. 
Now a quick caveat here. I am not going to be firing this 300 Win Mag with the EPL-4 on it. So if you're trying to win this scope, you don't have to worry about this is a scope that's been through a whole bunch of recoil. I'm gonna pull this off of this rifle and do some other content with it for you guys. So thanks for checking in. I hope you checked out series one and series two or part one, part two of this series. I've got one more episode coming out before we do the final one. Again, thanks for checking in to Ruger Gundog. See you guys next time. Let's take one more look at the difference in the windage knobs on the EPL-4 compared to the SH-4 Gen 2 and the EP-5. Notice how much smaller this capped windage turret is on the EPL-4 compared to this massive quick adjusting windage turret on the SH-4 Gen 2 as well as on the EP-5. You can also notice the difference with the massive 34 millimeter tube on the EP-5 and SH-4 Gen 2 compared to the 30 millimeter tube on the EPL-4.